start uh, we can note down this uh, sloka which i chant in the as a mangala charana esyon mesha nimishabhya jagata pralayo dayo yasya unmesha nimishabhyam jagata pralayo dayo tam shakti chakra vibhava prabhava tam shakti chakra vibhava prabhava shankaram numa shankaram numa जगद प्रलयोदय हम शक्ति चक्र विभव प्रभव शंकर the nature of self that is chaitanya atma it means the self can be experienced only as consciousness other than what we experience as self is all non self the so non self become self because of ignorance we don't know what the self is as we uh history we discussed about the experience the awareness as we call it awareness and consciousness now this uh, consciousness the nature of self the essential nature of self is one and the same in all conditions and all the stages of life that is the speciality of this one and the same and this consciousness is undivided it is all pervading and it is everywhere the same in same amount the same degree so what we experience in our childhood as our self consciousness the same thing we continue to experience in other stages of another stages of life so how can we say the consciousness is what with our own experience we know that consciousness is one the last last session we were uh, 
discussing about the deep sleep experience. So we can take the same. In deep sleep, what we are, that is the nature of our self. And there we have no limitations. It is unlimited. Why it is un- we feel it as unlimited ananta? Because there is the conditions are not applied there. No condition works there. We limit ourselves by identifying ourselves with the body and mind. So the limitation comes by body and mind. When there is no body-mind awareness, the body-mind consciousness, then there is no limit as such. So that is, that is what we experience in deep sleep. It has no boundary. So no beginning, no end. We only know we were in a blissful state, completely relaxed with the mind, not thought process, and Nothing is experienced, but the experiencer was there. There is no experience, but the experiencer was there. The absence of experience shows that the experiencer is still there, knowing the absence of experience. Something like that. In this point, what we yesterday we discussed was the absence, the emptiness cannot be experienced without an object. That is what we discussed yesterday. But in the case of deep sleep, the experiencer himself is there. No other object is seen or uh, in action. Therefore, the experiencer himself is uh, aware uh, about himself. So there is no second object. Therefore, after waking up, we feel that we were there. We never feel in that deep sleep where, where we are forgotten everything. We were absent or uh, I, I dead or I was dead. No. Nowhere. No, we, feel, we never feel that. Is the experiencer in deep sleep the same as the experiencer in the waking state? How you you uh, how you have this uh, doubt? No, how you are thinking about how it is different? So, so two words is nothing connected to this. It's, it's not connected to this. And uh, in the second one or third one, what we are talking is a different subject. So that is about the, uh, uh, something else. It's not the, about the consciousness itself. It is making all the jiva, uh, jivatma and paramatma. So these uh, questions we will take later. And this, uh, the experience shows unlimitedness. So there is no limit. The limit limitation is with the, with the mind and body. 
So when we are not aware about mind and body, we have no uh, limitation, but the awareness is still there. Therefore, it is said that Chaitanya Matma. Therefore, it is said the essential nature of consciousness is Chaitanya. The self is Chaitanya. And one another interesting point we have is that after waking up, people ask each other, how you slept? How you slept? So I slept very well. I had a good sleep, sound sleep. This is what we answer. Or if there was some disturbance or some dreams and then if you are not happy with the uh, sleep, then you will say that. But normally we say I had a good sleep, sound sleep. So I am uh, very fresh today. And when we say this, I had a good sleep, sound sleep. The person who was asking the question will not again ask what was the sound sleep, how it was. And you slept well, how you slept well? This question never asked. Why? Why, why it is not asked? But the person who is asking the question has experienced it, in some he knows what it is. Ah. So you see, uh, this, is, this is why we say the consciousness is one and the same in all bodies, all elements. Like, no, we, we had a good sweet, the same sweet we all had in a feast in Rabindara. So after having that, people ask each other, how was it? So say, it was very good, sweet. So then there is, there is no other, other, another question, that how that sweetness was, so how you enjoyed. It is not asked. Why? Because everybody enjoyed the same. So then there is the experience what the other person experienced, the same thing he also experienced. So there is no question about the second answer. It shows if our experience is the same, then the experiencer should be the same. The SP, if the experience is same, the experiencer should be same. Or we can say in another words, the experiencer should be present there when this experience was happening. So people are sleeping in different times. But when they wake up, they say the same answer. So, uh, normally when we see, we understand that, so people are sleeping in different times, so they are uh, different experiences. This must be, but it is not correct. Pe- the, uh, the people are sleeping in different time, but the experiencer is the same. Experience is also the same. Only the mind and body changes. The time and all those are connected to mind and body. In deep sleep there is no time. If there is no time, whenever you sleep, you sleep in the same same time. The time is there in waking state. When you see the clock and see the sun, see the moon, then you you have time. 
But in dream state, even in dream state, there is no time. Deeply we have no time. So when we have the same experience, together or as one experience, then there is no question and answer about the experience. This we have uh, in our uh, uh, day to day life, we have many uh, incidents that we can show that. So therefore, each person experience, not only uh, human beings, but also all other living beings, if they get the sleep, they experience the same amount of joy, the same amount of relaxation as we experience. That is what the Shastra says. So, therefore, we can say this consciousness, which is the nature of self, the very self is one and the same. The differences come when we uh, take the body, mind elements with the consciousness. Then body is different, mind is different, intellect is different, different sense organs are different, uh, thinking process is different, everything is different. But beyond that, there is no difference. So this is the beauty of self-awareness, self-consciousness. As yesterday we discussed, this self-consciousness is the background or the substratum of all other functions. Based on this, Everything happens. Now, if this is the character of our own self, then why it is not known? Why we are not aware about this always? And we have to do a long sadhana to just uh, get into this. The intellectually understanding is easy. We know, we can get the idea what it is. But for practical experience, we should turn our mind inward. So turning mind inward is a sadhana. The mind which goes externally cannot catch this, because it is taking only the uh, attributions to the consciousness, not the consciousness, the original consciousness. So we go after the attributions or with the manifestations or developments of consciousness. We take intellect as everything. Ego as our personality. So then how we can go inward and understand what is behind the intellect and ego. And it is formless, actionless. Therefore you have no indication what it is. You will not get any indication what it is. But for ego, of course, we have some indication. And intellect, obviously, it is working with you always. You are very, very clear about it. So therefore, the second sutra says, Jnanam Bandhaha Jnanam means knowledge, bandhaha means bondage. Now knowledge is bondage. So knowledge is a big bondage. You see, now 
this all sutras I said, it will work, it will go uh, in the background of consciousness. The consciousness is the background, the, the root. From there, the all developments happen. Now, why this uh, original consciousness is not known, not experienced? Because you are uh, after this knowledge. Knowledge means intellect. You take intellect as granted and intellect as the uh, main, what is the main object. Everything you, whatever we experience, whatever we do, is all connected to intellect. If there is no intellect, you cannot think about it. No brain function, what? There is no brain function. So everything is wrong. So you want uh, perfect intellect or an intellect with a good IQ. So I say that is the bondage. If you have a good intellect, it means it is functioning too much and you will not get even sleep. So, so you have no enjoyment in the life. Uh, so yeah, knowledge is bondage. So knowledge here is the functions of mind or intellect. It's bringing so many thoughts with different objects, with different emotions, Always it is there. So from morning to night until whatever we do, we are all thinking about this knowledge. We are going to get more knowledge. We are studying this Yoga Sutra is also for more knowledge. We get uh, some more knowledge. <laughs> so, this is another bondage. Uh, so, here, uh, this, this is in their, their technical term, it is said Arnava Mala. Arnava Mala. There are Arnava Mala, Paurusha Mala and Baudha Mala. Mala means, you know, impurity. So the, all these Mala, the, all these impurities, are the cause of bondage. And this bondage, this, uh, uh, this, this knowledge, actually it is not knowledge, it can be said ignorance. By, uh, although it is a function of intellect, but it is bounding you, it is uh, taking you uh, away from consciousness. Therefore, it is not correctly knowledge, it is ignorance. And now we have uh, different kinds of ignorance, like first ignorance that we don't know ourselves. That is the first ignorance. So innate ignorance of self. That is Paurusha, Paurusha Mala, the innate ignorance of self. So we don't know ourselves, therefore we depend on the functions of intellect. If the intellect says you are a man, we accept that I am a man. The intellect says no, you are a woman, so you are Intellect says, no, you are an educated person. So, we feel it. You are an educated person. You have this job, that job. You have this much money and that, uh, that thing, this thing, uh, so many things, everything it brings. And we accept it. And we identify with that and then live with that. So interesting. So this is the chain of bondages. It is called Baudhamala. The ignorance inherent in buddhi. Ignorance inherent in buddhi. So actually what happened, it starts from the uh, self-ignorance 
and it goes to the ego level, then comes to the intellect level, then it is uh, spread or it is connected with mind and then it goes to body and now you have everywhere ignorance. So you don't know what is body, you don't know what is mind, you don't know what is intellect, no discrimination. Therefore it is a bandha. Okay, now how this uh, all worldly affairs work? So now we will discuss about the categories, different kinds of worldly experiences, empirical experiences. Now you remember these two. First one is Chaitanya as the Self, everything clear there, very good. The ultimate state, that is the background. From there, when we uh, take the ego, mind and all, add it to that. So you remember the sleep, as I said, it's a very good sattva. You can remember the sleep and uh, meditate, then you will be in that Chaitanya, so the experience will come. And after that, the first thought, second thought, third thought, like this, one after another. And more identification with emotional thoughts than the intellectuals, intellectual thoughts. You see, if we compare thought patterns, the intellectual thoughts are not very strong. Actually, intellectual thoughts give you more benefits. Or you can do jobs and things like that. But they are actually less stronger. The emotional thoughts are more strong. Why? Because when you compare emotional thoughts and intellectual thoughts, you leave the emotional, uh, intellectual thoughts and take the emotional thoughts. You see? And the emotional thoughts, uh, there is no background of intellect because emo when emotion uh, predominates, you know, the, it, it is working, dominant, you will not think about it. No question, no answer. The all education, gone. Your mind is completely blank with this. It means it is very strong. And you are too much attached to this. And you will be ready to leave everything for one emotional thought to protect that. Or it can be love or hate or whatever, whatever type. But it is very strong. So therefore, when we compare the uh, ignorance, there are categories. So we can say, the ignorance uh, with the emotional thoughts identification is more stronger than the intellectual thought identification. Intellectual thoughts are, you can, you can change, you know, you can give some suggestions, some ideas, new ideas, so that if you get a new idea, the old idea is gone. But emotions are not like that. So once you are, once you are, you are hurt by somebody, you will remember for all life. Because I heard this, it's very strong. You say, oh, you will remember forever and uh, you will live with that. So therefore, I should be very careful with the emotional thoughts. Because they will just attack you and uh, catch you forever. So this category is made. The third sutra. Yoni Vargaha Kala Shariram Yoni Vargaha Kala Shariram Yoni Vargaha Kala Shariram Ha, Yoni Vargaha Yoni here means the source of objective world is called Yoni Vargaha The source of objective world In our, uh, this uh, what we have here, the meaning, he has given all the options. Like when you see the dictionary, 
uh, in missionary there will be many options of you know, he has given everything but uh, according to the contest we have take the correct meaning because this is like a dictionary he has given it. so uh, the new student will be confused <laughs> which meaning should be correct so, therefore we have to follow the system from there we have to take so yoni vargaha means the source of objective world the source of uh, or the origin of, of objective world and it is said as maya mala so like the jnanam bandha was anava mala and this is called maya mala the impurity connected to maya the impurity connected to the source of object that is called varga the so varga means uh, a group or a class a group of that is called varga in sanskrit so yoni varga kala shariram kala shariram kala here it means activity actually the word meaning of kala is a small part of anything it is called kala so there are many kalas that we will discuss later so this uh, it means uh, the activity or the action what we perform that is one group and the other group is the objects the source of objects so whatever we perform as an action and reaction is all connected to objects so the objects and the actions these are the yoni varga and kala sharira and this kala sharira is called karma mala karma mala this mala impurity is connected to karma karma here generally activity the impurity connected to activity and the first one was the impurity connected to uh, the source of object or objective impurity so these two are there now in connection with all these all these two or uh, like uh, last one also anava mala so we can take all these three together we perform the actions so now the chaitanya the consciousness is completely forgot when we are in action the action is being performed we are our consciousness is not working it means we are not aware about the consciousness so that is the uh, strength of ignorance we forget it there is no awareness so we want to bring the awareness every moment in every action what we are if we can bring that you will get tremendous energy continuous because you are always connected to the source so then you will get energy and the mind will be relaxed and as i said you will be not carried away with the intellectual uh, performance thoughts and the emotional performance thoughts you will be with the consciousness with the source uh, the emotional thoughts and intellectual thoughts will come and per, uh, give the what you say that uh, you can see you will be aware about that but you will be not carried away you will be not identified with that attached with that because your identification is remembered or you keep the identification in awareness with the consciousness so when it develops into this yoni varga and kala sharira the objective world and the uh, world of actions we know what happens whatever happens is all happens with this 
and why it is said as kala sharira kala means a small part the small part works and kala has some other meaning so when a yeah the part no small part of that if i want one thought is constructed one thought is formed you know in a simple thought you have consciousness an object and an action or the movement or whatever the energy we say the 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 vibrations and the background of ignorance so at least these four are connected to one thought the consciousness because without consciousness not thought can be formed or you cannot be aware about the thought so consciousness is there ignorance is there and the object always will be there and the action as a thought it get after thoughts you you will feel something and your hands and legs are moving and you are you are doing some action it comes from the thought process so this this is how it happens and then we remember it again one thought came and it performed it, its action and we, we did something good or bad or whatever after that we remember it it means the first thought produces an after effect which again will come as a second thought or third thought or fourth and the chain of thought process in the so when we think about an object suppose we think about the wood here what happened this is wood just to understand this is wood now you will think oh i have this wood in my home there and this wood there i saw this wood there oh it may be similar to that and all this is connected there so it is all unnecessary Why you are going after this wood? But mind takes like that. And knowing this thing, uh, this uh, as a single thought, it is almost impossible. These thoughts are all connected, interconnected. So it goes like that, one after another. So there the problem starts. Sometimes we want to do something. and we sit for that uh, action no we got uh, that work we want to do take the instruments for that particular work but when that instrument is in our hand or we are we start the work other thoughts comes connected to that and you lose your energy you spend your energy with all other thoughts and the work is not completed perfectly and you are tired immediately why because unnecessary thoughts are acquiring them, acquiring the space therefore this is a we can say actually if it is continuously happening and every time it is happening it is a psychological problem and you no know, you cannot concentrate on a on on an action so we should uh, keep mind concentrated as the step by step process from consciousness and then to the object and the action so this is yoni varga and kalasha so in kala sharira the kalas uh, they uh, say about many kinds of kalas to understand the inner uh, no process or inner changes they call it as a kanchuka of maya the kanchuka the kanchuka means it's a uh, something which uh, catches you or something which uh, Hold you. That is called kanchuka. 
Kanchukas of Maya, that is technical term they use. The first one is this Kala. So, uh, first Kanchuka is called, first Kanchuka of Maya. The how Maya holds you, or my, how Maya catch you, catch you or mind. Because Maya catch you through mind. Okay, so the first, first Kanchuka is Kala. It's called Kala. So kala means the limitation in respect of angry. That is first Kala. Anger. Okay? And second Kala is called Vidya. See, uh, it is connected to knowledge. It is called Vidya Kanjuka. So it limits uh, through knowledge. Knowledge means that uh, like the mental functions. This is what the knowledge means here. It is not the self-knowledge. Thought process. And the third one is Raga. Raga means desire. So third catching point is Raga. By desires it falls. If uh, you have uh, less desires, you will be more happy. If you have more desires, you are supposed to be more unhappy. Because to achieve all, all those desires, you have to work hard. So you are unhappy. You have limited desires, good desires, limited desires. So you end you are happy. So therefore, Maya holds with the desires. It will bring more desires, so you are unhappy with that. And then Kala. Kala means time. The limitation of time. And time we we know, we are always worried about time. So what happened after this and uh, my future, what would be in my future and all those about the future. Kala, the limitation of time. This is also uh, a catching point of mind. Then comes Niyati. Niyati. Niyati is cause and effect relation. Cause and effect state. Space, form, all these are called niyatis. Like we say desha, kala and all those. The space, cause and effect, because cause and effect there you know. Each effect has a cause and it will be connected and all those. So cause and effect and space as a desha and the forms or whatever manifestations. What we see. This is all called niyati. Now we are here because of our niyati. Because uh, there is no reason why we should be here. So there is some niyati which brought us here together. So this is called cause and effect. There is some cause. This is also maya. Why you came all the way? Because there is some reason. Some reason that brought it here. So we are all born in different places. Now we are together. So there is Niyati which connects all this. So this is also Maya. These are all their uh, technical terms. And now we will discuss the Maya in the uh, next sutras. So this is two parts, Yoni Varga and Kala Charida. This is a development of uh, ignorance as the source of object and the action. That is what it said. Now, uh, about the thought process, we have two parts, object and subject. In each thought, there will be an object and the subject as we know it. The subject means the knowing. Now, when these two are there, how the thoughts are formed and how we remember those thoughts. So we know the thoughts are formed and then there is name and form. The shape of the object and name of the object. 
and most of the uh, thoughts we remember through names. Names means words, the pronouns there. And some other thoughts we remember by form. So we remember the form, the shape of the object. So these are the uh, process. If you remove the name, names and forms from the thought, what would be left over? Take any of the thoughts and remove the name and form. Something you will get? If there is no name and form, you will not get anything. Because then the thought is formless. And formless thought is not thought. When thought is formless, formless, you have this awareness as consciousness. You know there is something, but I don't know. You know that I feel something, but I don't know. So this would be there. When you sit for meditation without a thought process, you want to remove all thought process. Well, this is very difficult, but uh, you try to do that. Yeah, just imagine uh, one day you uh, forgot all the thoughts. You are not remembering an object. You feel very relaxed. So maybe for a for a moment. Then after that you get oh today I had a good meditation. I felt that nice. What is this? Now you see, you feel you felt very good. You felt relaxed. You say there was no thought in that place. But there was thought. But that thought was formless. There was no identified form. There was no remembered name. But something was there. It gave you relaxation. And this is in the state of meditation, but it happens in between. Also it happens, but we are not aware about that. So now the next sutra says, Jnana Dishthanam Matrita So what is the basis of knowledge? Jnana Dishthanam. So here the thought process, the mental functions. So the basis of knowledge says Matrika, the corresponding letters of alphabets or the sound, the name of that object. The name of that object is the uh, Matrika. Matrika here it is as a magical power of alphabets. We have alphabets A, B, C, D and I. So these alphabets make many things, all the objects. It's a match how it is formed and then it is. Without Knowing the names of the object, we see the object, but immediately some name, something is made there. We will name it with some noun or pronoun, something will be there. So that, this, or Rama, Sita, or something, something. And why he says, here the matrika, the alphabets are the base of thought. It is very interesting. It's very, when we see you know, the process of uh, thought and uh, how the brain functions, it can be understood that way. So, jnana dishthanam matrika, the sound corresponding to 
an object is the base of that object or thought process. In a single thought, there may be many objects connected, as I said. And from each connected object, the mind will form another thought with even many, even more objects. So if we start with, uh, suppose we start with uh, three objects, a thought, and then it multiplies into nine or nine hundred or nine thousand, it goes like that. Because if you have more information with an object, there is a chance of forming more thoughts. You have less information about an object, there is a chance of making less thoughts. That is the difference between educated person and uneducated person. An educated person can make many thoughts from an object or a single object. An uneducated person will take lesser. This is the difference. If we see this then as an object, we know we, we know this is wood. That is very simple. This is wood. It made of from a wood. And if you know the chemistry of this, so you will think about the chemistry. Oh, this is made of this carbon and all those you know, combination of this. And if you know uh, uh, the atomic theory of that, so you will think about the atoms and you will think about the gases, how it forms and how it is reflected. If you know the how the eyesight reflects the object, if you know that process, you will remember that also. You see, so many things happen. Now, actually what what is the object? It is undecided. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is undecided. So you cannot decide what this object is. But the analytical person simply, simply see, <coughs> take it as a wooden furniture. That's all. He knows that this is made of wood. This is the difference. So that is why the thought process is based on sound, no names and alphabets. The name of a uh, object, uh, when it comes as uh, in the thought, the name of object comes in the uh, thought, it brings so many other objects. So that is the magic of this madhrika. So madhrika means thoughts, actually madhrika means thoughts. It's connected to mother. So, uh, is the mother of thoughts. So that is called Matrika. The Jnana Dishthana Matrika, alphabets and numbers. And why it is so? In Tantra, in Mantra Shastra, all the mantras are formed from the alphabets. Okay? Alpha, beta, and all. And these mantras are devatas. These mantras are devadas, god and goddesses. And each alphabet has a devata. Like A, E, U and all those has a devata. And these devatas together forms mantra. Then they create an energy there. And that energy is connected to the mind through this mantra. It means we want to have that energy from the source, from the nature, from the mother nature, then you have to chant that particular mantra. So the particular mantra will form a particular energy for your thought. This is the mantra shastra here. Therefore, each mantra has different energy levels or different auras in the world. People say aura, so different levels. So this is this this is how it forms. Now, if we are uh, saying, uh, we we use English language, uh, 
or we use uh, instead of english language we use sanskrit so two languages has two different energies why because alphabets are di- used different and it creates different energy so we call mother as mother or ma or amma or uh, mata in different different names it has little differences so in tantra shastra mantra shastra we have a lipi nyas it is called lipi nyas lipi is all the alphabets so we do nyasa nyasa means uh, installing installing those alphabets in different energy points of the body this is called a nyasa so after installing this uh, uh, letters in different parts of the body the body is purified with the energies or the energy level of the body is activated so you have you get uh, more connection of this uh, energy levels in, with the body so the level is uh, high in that you can say so this is connected to thought because when the body creates more energy naturally it goes to thought process and then you have thought stronger thought or concentrated thought so this is how the mantra shastra works so you chant the mantra you pronounce the mantra then the energy is activated if you are aware about it so with our awareness it is not working correctly or rightly if you Uh, no which mantra activate which point which energy point then it is activated or we are aware about that so the energy is created and thought process is there and it goes on like that so therefore it is called matrika now the mantra can control the thought and mantra can give you different kinds of thought or better thoughts what you want so the mantra can be the tool to control the thought and produce the thought this is how uh, we uh, learn or we practice mantra chanting and do japa and all this how it makes this this is a scientific reason how it makes now up to this uh, point the four sutras we discussed uh, chaitanya thought process and different kinds of thought process and the basis of the thought process now the chaitanya will be in a different form for the action or for the creation the chaitanya is going to create something so in that creation this chaitanya the consciousness will be in many many forms multitude of forms so that we will discuss in the next sutras so today we stop here oh